with me now, Dr Naptheim, good morning. Good morning, Neil. Look, with what's coming out of Canberra, I think we deserve better than political platitudes and get to the long term in a moment. When did Toyota tell you this was going to happen? Uh, four o'clock uh, yesterday afternoon, I got a uh, telephone call from Dr Toyota, who is the head uh, national, uh, internationally of Toyota, and he advised me that they would uh, cease production at the end of 2017. I said immediately, uh, is this decision irreversible? Uh, is there anything we can do as a state government to make this decision be reconsidered? He said, absolutely irreversible decision of the Toyota board, and he is here to announce that but decision. But that's a bit rough, isn't it? I mean, this is a company that's taken a <laughs> hell of a lot in taxpayers' money. Isn't it wrong to treat us like that? I was shocked by the suddenness of the decision. I was shocked by the fact that we've been having ongoing neg negotiations with Toyota for months and months and months, including negotiations at officer level as late as Friday of last week, uh, where we were talking about potential investment in new bottles, potential co-investment, and uh, we certainly also increased our purchasing uh, rules so that we would not only purchase locally made cars, but the uh, other vehicles made by the same company that were, were, where they were fit for purpose. So have you actually sat down and met Toyota yet? Well, well I'm expecting to meet Toyota at 10.30 today. Um, and uh, have them explain in more detail the decision and I will be certainly uh, expressing my concern about the suddenness of the decision but I'll also be saying to them uh, what are they going to do to assist the workers in transition not only at Toyota but also in the supply chain. Okay. We have our first responsibility is to those workers and their families. Okay, but we've got to accept it's a done deal, it's going to happen. No I, car industry in Victoria. I, I think it is a done deal. It's um, end of 2017. Uh, we do have some time to work with workers in transition. So I was out of Toyota this morning at 6 o'clock, standing on the gate, uh, talking to workers as they came to work. They expressed uh, disappointment, but they are very tough and resilient workers. They uh, are looking to the opportunities they have in the future, okay. and uh, we're happy to work with them on those opportunities. So how many jobs with the component industry, how many jobs are we looking at in Victoria? I mean, 20,000 was one estimate, is that right? Uh, uh, it's 2,500 directly with uh, Toyota's production line. Uh, we estimate that it could be about ten to 15,000 in the supply chain. Uh, but the implications... See, I met people at the gate yesterday, today who were contractors, um, you know, security contractors, uh, other contractors who are working in Toyota who will also be affected and their industries will need to change. So it's not hard to say it could be 20,000 people. Well, it'd certainly be challenging for our economy. But let's not forget... Victoria has a strong, robust, diverse economy. We've created... It doesn't look at it at the moment. Well, in... in SPC, um, the car industry, where, where's the robust economy? Well, the robust economy is in the fact that there's 52,000 more Victorians in a job now than three years but ago. we've got the worst unemployment figures in the 52, country. 52,000 more Victorians in a job now Do than three years... Do we have the worst unemployment figures in the country? No, we don't. But 52,000... Well, who's worse? Northern Territory. Tasmania. Uh, 50, so we're second worst? No, we're not second worst. We, we have, we have 52,000 more Victorians. We've cre in the last three years, Victoria has created more jobs than, is, than, than any other state or territory except point, Western Australia. This is the point I make with political mm. platitudes. We're talking about 20,000 people out there, real tears, mm. real, joys, real, mm. real jobs, real mm. debts, and we give them this stuff. What hope is there for these people? What's the new industry we're going to create? How are we going to get them jobs? Now, Neil, just uh, allow me to do that. And the hope we do give them is the fact that we have, in Victoria, created the second largest number of jobs in the past three years of any state or territory in Australia. So that gives them hope. There is hope in the fact that our retail sales figures are up, our building approvals are up, our exports are up 11% on this time last year. Coles announced last week 3,500 new jobs in Victoria. We can say that since we've been in government, our trade mission program has delivered an extra $4 billion in exports and 3,500 new jobs that we've got new jobs with the East West Link construction, regional rail construction, Port of Melbourne construction. But the future is in the Asian century, the growth of opportunities. What industry, Premier? I mean, we well, accept that manufacturing is dying well, in Victoria. Let, let Do you me, accept that as a starting point? No, let me, no I don't you accept don't. No. Well, well, let, let, it? No, let, let me go through them. 
where the opportunities in the Asian century are food, a very, very significant uh, industry for us into the future. And SPC is about to close, well, possibly. We, we have not certainly, we are still working with SPC. Yeah, but moment. it shows we the are, problem with the food industry we are, when SPC is struggling. Well, what we need to do is make sure that we have SPC as efficient, productive industry. And that's what they're proposing. That's what we're working with them on. Um, right. Education is one of our growth industries. Tourism and hospitality, professional services. And in manufacturing, we are large manufacturers in pharmaceuticals, in advanced manufacturing, in medical devices, in, in, in Geelong with the carbon fibre industry. Carbon revolution is one of the great growth industries in Geelong. So, and we're assisting them to grow and develop. So there are great opportunities in our manufacturing, in specialised manufacturing, which we are very good at. That's why I say... I'm confident about our strong, robust, diverse right. economy. So well, food, education, tourism, some manufacturing, is that giving hope to these 20,000 people? Are they going to be absorbed in these industries? Well, I think they can be. And uh, they, you know, we've seen growth in the last three years of nearly 40,000 jobs in health care. We've got nearly 29,000 in professional, scientific and technical services. 19,000 jobs in agriculture, fisheries. Does this really fishery give forestry. me hope if I've been working for 20 years putting bolts on an assembly line on Toyotas or Holdens or Fords? Is this really giving me any hope? Well, when I go to Carbon Revolution in Geelong, where we've created new jobs... How many? We've created another 80 new jobs in the last 12 months. 80. And most of those people are ex-Ford workers. Okay, 80. So, so 20,000 people we're talking about in this, in this Toyota decision. There's 3,500 new jobs last week in Coles. 3,500 new jobs. 3,200 new jobs in East West Link construction. 3,000 new jobs in Port of Melbourne construction. You... So there are new jobs and f nearly 53,000 new jobs, more Victorians employed now than three years ago. So we're growing jobs, growing the economy, diversifying the economy, and there are those opportunities. And what I'm going to Canberra to get the Prime Minister on board with is... Uh, funding to assist those workers in transition, whether they're Toyota workers or in the supply chain, and then funding for key infrastructure and the new job industries of okay. the future. Is it possible this could force us into recession? I don't believe so. I think we're a strong, robust economy that is growing uh, at a moderate rate. Uh, that's what we're doing. We're growing jobs. Uh, exports are growing strong. And indeed, if I uh, look at exports... In the last three months of 2013, our exports were 11 per cent higher what than in the, what in the same three months of uh, uh, 2012, particularly in food and agriculture. Okay. Our dairy industry is going strongly into Asia, and we've seen that with the bidding war for warnable cheese and butter. We're seeing it with uh, Chinese investment in jobs in Karam for uh, dairy okay. powder production. The Prime Minister said there's nothing the government could have done to stop this. Do you agree? With respect to Toyota, I think unfortunately it is. That How much money have we put into Toyota in the past five years? Oh, we've put uh, millions of dollars into Toyota, but they have made 500 it. million they've got in the past five years between the two, I'm told. Is that the, right? Well, you'd know those figures better than I would, but uh, uh, certainly we've put a lot of money into those industries. They have made it clear that it was the high Aussie dollar the relatively small but competitive Australian market and the relatively high cost of production. Do the workers take any of the blame for this? I think there are bigger issues than that. The bigger issues were the high Aussie dollar, the competitive Australian market and the relatively declining market share of uh, locally made products. And, and each and every Victorian Australian, when they purchased their cars, were purchasing imported cars rather than locally made cars.